Hey team, in this video I'm going to go over how to make some uh, super awesome shirts. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, why would you want to make your own shirts? Um, a lot of different reasons, but one, it's pretty easy to make them. You'll see in this video um, I have a lot of tools to make uh, t-shirts um, that I've built up over the years, but I will be sure to like highlight um, what would be some beginner tools that you could use to, to get off the ground. Also, making t-shirts is really fun. Um, being able to design something and turn it into reality is my jam. I like 3D printing, I like uh, t-shirt making, anything, I like CNC mills, anything I can turn um, digital stuff into reality, uh, the better. And uh, probably the main reason I'm really into t-shirts is they're a great fundraiser. Uh, who wouldn't want to spend 10 bucks for a nice nerd shirt? Um, and yeah, <laughs> that's really all there is to it. Now, on to the design. I'm making Pi Day shirts. And uh, you may ask why I'm making Pi Day shirts. Well, I teach at a school for nerds. And so it's, <laughs> you got to know your demographic. Also, it's my birthday. <laughs> Pi Day is. And also, Einstein was born on my birthday. Hey, Nick. Weren't you born on his birthday? It's all relative. <laughs> uh, let's start with the inspiration. So here's uh, Apollonian Gasket. I had to look that up how to say that. It's, it's kind of hard. Um, Apollonian Gasket. Um, uh, so basically you start with a, uh, a circle and then you put three circles inside of it that are all tangent to each other. and. Um, and then you start adding more circles uh, and you make sure those are tangent to all the uh, to three circles each and yada 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 you just uh, keep on building it up and building it up and you get this beautiful kind of fractal-esque uh, thing i wanted to do the same thing but i wanted to um, do it with the pi symbol or any arbitrary shape and I have to change the rules a little bit. Basically, I'm going to put the biggest circle I can inside the pie shape and then the next biggest circle and the next biggest circle. And just by the nature of the way that you're going to pack in the next biggest circle and the next biggest circle, uh, you're going to make um, a lot of the circles will look tangent to each other and it'll have the uh, Apollonian gasket feel to it. So I'm going to call this the uh, pseudo Apollonian gasket. All right. How do you figure out where to actually put the circles? You could do it manually, uh, but if you're a computer science teacher and you wanna justify your own existence, you're definitely gonna use code. So uh, what I did was I took the image, a binary image, black and white image, and I eroded it. That's a common binary operation that you can do to images. And you can erode by different amounts. And I wanted to find the, um, the biggest amount I could erode it where I still have a little bit left. And if I, if I wrote it any more, then I would have nothing left. And if I figure out that size, then I can go and find where those pixels are and I can draw a circle there. And how big do I draw that circle? Well, that's gonna be re uh, related to how much I eroded it. And you do that and then you start with a, um, and then you, you erase that from the original image and then you repeat that process over and over and over again with the remaining part of the binary image. And you do circle after circle after circle. What I love about computer science is once you get it set up to do it once, there's just a little bit of extra work you have to do to like make it do it over and over and over again. So I can place one circle and then two, and then placing you know the 220 some odd circles that are in this uh, were not a problem. All right, also, um, 
having the computer do it is great because it took the computer about an hour with my first code to like get this to actually figure out where all the circles are. And honestly, I shouldn't have spent any more time on it. I should have just taken that and called it done. I did optimize it. I got down to 10 minutes. I could optimize it further and probably get it down to seconds if I really, really needed to. I have some really good ideas on that. And I'm tempted to because it's just a good problem. Um, but I'm not going to do it because I don't need to. The main reason uh, I, I optimized it was uh, I'm making this video and for this video I need animations and so I actually had to run the, through the problem a few more times uh, just to make different versions of how I constructed it just uh, just for the um, benefit of, of your, you guys. Now that I have a design I can move over to my vinyl cutter sil uh, Silhouette Cameo and um, if you don't want if you don't have a vinyl cutter or don't want to buy one you uh you can do it with some freezer paper and an exacto knife i've made tons and tons of t-shirts with just paper and an exacto knife um, but i love the vinyl cutter this is a cnc machine you can see that it can move back and forth in the x and the y and then what you don't see is there's a little knife that can rotate around so it's always cutting in the right direction um, this is such great uh, value engineering, how they get it all in this nice little package. And now on to the tweening process. This is where you just have to pull all the vinyl off that you want to not have in your design. Oh, I guess I should mention while I'm doing this that you have to mirror your design when you cut it. I almost made this mistake. So as you can see here, uh, this is pie backwards. Um, that's because of the way it's going to get stuck onto the screen, it's going to be uh, the reverse of what I actually want. Um, I think I counted something like 220 circles, so this took a while. Uh, <laughs> but one really cool thing about this design is all the vinyl is connected except for the ASMSA in, in the, the bottom right circle there. And so um, everything will hold together really nicely whenever I actually go to do the transfer. All right, now that it's tweened, uh, now uh, you gotta do the transfer. So you're gonna pull off some um, transfer tape. Um, I actually don't know where to buy this. I had this roll for a long time and it, it's lasted me forever. So it's, uh, it's like masking tape, but it's not quite as sticky. You actually want it to be just, just in the sweet spot of stickiness because you need to have everything stuck so you can have everything together, but later on you're going to pull it off. So um, I'm sure if you just uh, Google transfer tape, you'll find something that uh, is similar to this. So I get the whole design covered. This one wasn't so critical because um, everything's actually held together. There's no islands except for the ASMSA, uh, but I did it anyways just in case. And here, here you can see me struggling forever to get the corner. I am the worst at getting the corners of these vinyl things. Um, so, and um, just for the record, this is like 16 times speed. So uh, I'm not going fast at all. Uh, so anyways, you just slowly pull off the paper and uh, you can see I don't want to lose my letters and I'm, you know, be really careful. This one was really uh, pretty, pretty easy. I've had way worse ones. Uh, I do a little cleanup and um, now on to the next step. Uh, there's my screen. Um, I actually get those screens from a company here in Arkansas. Um, they're pretty reasonable, like 20-something bucks per screen, and um, I use my screens over and over and over again. This process that I'm using with, I, with vinyl decals for printing is a very unusual process. Most people use uh, photo emulsion. Uh, I just don't like that process because that will uh, make it hard for you to reclaim your screens with vinyl. Whenever I'm done with it, I can just pull it off. So here you can see I'm applying it to the screen. And once it's on the screen, then you just got to pull off the transfer tape and you're pretty much ready to go. 
but yeah, um, yeah, this this vinyl decal method is, is very unusual. Most people do not do uh, vinyl decals for screen printing. In fact, I'm the only one that I know of that does it. Whenever I was searching for if this was even a possible way to do it, I think I found one other YouTube video where one person had done it, um, but it's definitely not the norm at all. Um, what's great about these though is you can use the you can use the design over and over and over again uh, without too much um, you don't have any de degradation it'll stay as long as you as you'd want um, and then when you're done with it you just pull it off and you're ready to put the next screen on here you see I have the shirt and uh, I'm just gonna put the screen on top of it put some ink on the screen and use a squeegee the kind of ink I'm using is uh, water-based speedball um, ink that is different from the standard ink that people use called Plastisol. I like water-based ink because it's a lot easier to handle with if you get it on stuff. You can wash it off. Um, you don't have to have any harsh chemicals. Um, anyways, just all around uh, good for just uh, kids using it. Um, anyways, there you go. You squeegee it across. And... Maybe do it a few times and pick your screen up and you got your design. Now this is wet, you gotta be careful. Um, from this point on, uh, you'd set it out and let it dry and then later on you run it through a heat oven and you got shirts. <laughs> All right, a few notes before I finish up here. One, after you get done printing your shirts, the ink's gonna not be set. So if you put it in a washer, the washer would uh, would dissolve the ink. It's water soluble, even if it's dry. So you have to heat set it. Uh, to do that easily at home, you can just put a pillowcase over it and get an iron at, on high dry heat and do it for about a minute and a half. Uh, no steam on, on your iron because again, the stuff is water soluble. All right, if you want to print at home, which I highly suggest, it's pretty easy. You just need a few basic things. You need a screen. You can make them, but you can buy them for about 20 bucks. You need a squeegee. Um, that's gonna be about 10, 15 bucks. And you need an X-Acto knife so you can cut out some kind of design if you wanna do it on freezer paper. And uh, you'll need some ink. And the ink's only about 15 bucks pretty reasonable hobby to get uh, into. Doesn't cost very much. I hope that um, I inspired somebody out there to get into it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or that you decided to actually try this out. I would love to hear that. And that's it. I'm gonna wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me leave you with this amazing animation.